Hello YouTube, I want to introduce you to the truck affectionately known as Big Red and it is about to become part of the Grenade Motorsports family because we are giving it a new lease on life. Um, we're going to talk about the good and the bad. I want to talk about the good first, what's good about this truck, and then we're going to talk about the bad because there's quite a lot of bad. <laughs> so uh, let, let's talk about this one. 1979, I know it looks like a 65, 1979 F-250 gave its life for this project many years ago. Um, it's been with the current family over 20 years. And the good part about this truck, the best part, is someone already rebuilt the axles. So that's good. Um, they've also put another engine in it. They've also, they've obviously had it painted. They built a steering column and power steering assembly that can stay with the truck. So that's all good. Um, it's, got a, it's got a great seat. We'll look at that. Let's. Let's look in here and see if we can find anything good about this. Uh, we believe this is a 302 carbureted engine, and I have not verified that because I never looked at the block numbers, and the reality is the motor sounds good, transmission seems to work, but my issue with this engine is, number one, it's carbureted. Number two, it's... It runs like butthole. <laughs> it's terrible. It runs terrible. Um, it takes 20 minutes to warm up. It has an electric choke, but I think it's more of a suggestion than an actual um, functioning device. So this is coming out. Look at that. Not sure what was going on there, but all that's coming off too. Some more good stuff about this truck. It's got good tires. Right? It's got good rims. Those are staying. We love that. That's great. So that's that's a bonus. Um, it, it's got a nice toolbox. <laughs> we haven't moved right now because it's all coming out. The bed's coming apart. And it's it's tough to find a lot of good. You know, you really got to dig deep with some of this stuff. A big challenge of this truck is obviously rust. Rust is a problem no matter where you live. But we're used to it up here in the north because trucks like this just don't exist. They've already rotten themselves into oblivion. They're gone. Um, this one, someone has painted and patched over the years. You can see the body filler. Um, I, I know that if you were to sandblast this down, this entire piece right here um, is, is it's just junk. It's gone. There's a bunch of filler here. There's probably a big hole. The cab corners are real thin. Um, the solution for this is to find a repair panel or a replacement bedside. A lot of the internet sites say these exist, but they don't. You go to put them in your shopping cart and it says unavailable, unavailable, unavailable. The fact is they want to sell them and they're gauging interest, but these are not being reproduced at this time. Um, what we've done is we went looking in the south and we found a complete donor truck, long bed, same year range, same body style, with good clean lines. And we're going to salvage that truck to make this one live on. Upon first glance, this 1965 F-250 four-wheel drive is an amazing piece of equipment. And it is, it truly is. This thing looks as tough as nails. It looks like it was built to haul logs up a mountainside. And at one time, I'm sure it probably did. But somewhere in its life, someone decided to transplant a 1979 F-250 frame, engine, and driveline underneath it, and then give it a paint job, and, and probably honestly saved it. Now I'm sure one of the reasons that they decided to use body filler and patch panels everywhere they could is likely because there weren't a lot of things available back when this was done, however many years ago that may have been. Parts now are even more scarce, so having it be a 1979 underneath is actually a big benefit. As far as bodywork and sheet metal goes, we've got a solution for that. As we look around closer, I'll point out a couple of the things that are going to need attention, like here on the hood, it's quite thin in several spots. The tops of these fenders, you can't tell, but they're literally paper thin. And this cowl, it leaks. Water comes into the truck and it comes in from several places. It looks great at first till you start looking around. Now you see the rays on this floor here? That's not factory. That happened when they transplanted it to the 79. 
If you look at the donor truck that we have outside, its floor lines are different. With water coming in all around the windshield, all around the doors, and on the bottom of the footwells, this thing is a candidate for major reconstruction. plan for this truck then? Is it getting a restoration? Well, no. It's definitely not getting a resto mod, but it sort of is. What we're going to do is disassemble this truck in its entirety down to the rolling chassis, where all I have is a frame, axles, and a steering. At that point, the engine and transmission, transfer case, drive shaft, fuel systems, all coming out of this truck, and we're going to rebuild it with a modern version of exactly what you see here. I'm not gonna chassis swap it. I'm gonna save that 79. We're gonna put new leaf springs. We're gonna put all new rubber bushings. We're gonna have all of the sheet metal sent out to sandblasting along with the donor truck panels. And we're gonna reassemble this truck with the best of both trucks. Whatever is good from one will stay and whatever is good from the other will come aboard. So it's gonna be a long process. This is not a quick one, two, three month build. This truck is going to have um, a bit of, of serious surgery going on. Because once the cab is off, I wanna actually lower the floor, build a, a, a lower footwell pocket so that the occupants are comfortable. I mean, it's got good chrome, it should be okay. <laughs> Hey man, what do you got there? Uh, looks like I found some bubble gum. That ain't bubble gum, come on. <laughs> Don't taste it, seriously. Is it really bubble gum? It looks suspiciously like bubble gum. To patch a hole, fits perfectly. Oh man, we'll just leave that. <laughs> Wanna screw in it, tap it, it'll be fine. <laughs> How's it going over there? Oh, let's get the heater duct off. Boom. This. Oh, smell it. <laughs> no, don't smell it. <laughs> That's the bulk of the mess cleaned up. Um, I'm going to get the tank out next. We're going to put the uprights in and take this cab off and set it on the ground over there. Um, the whole floor is getting cut out. We're redesigning the floor so that the cab actually drops down a little bit on the frame. So we're kind of um, channeling it, but that's, that's uh, coming up. The goal for this morning is to get this tank drained, this cab off, this bed sectioned into pieces because I would say 95% of it is not going to be used. So we got our work cut out for us today, but we're on it. Let's do it.
See all this business? All this is a facade. It's not for real. I mean, they meant well, but... <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's held on with glue, I think. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much undercoating. That isn't welded. Well, that's good for me. So, yeah, we'll get there. There were a lot of parts that were not welded. There was a bunch of stuff that was literally house caulk, putty, silicone, and truck bed liner was holding this thing together. But the frame and the axles are in fantastic shape. The motor will be an easy pull. We'll get good modern leaf springs on there for our new body panels. So it's real early in the morning in a January of 2021, and uh, it's unseasonably warm, which allows me to do one thing. Get the pressure washer out and clean this giant ugly truck. And I know it looks rough, and it is. But the part that's good about it is that it's right in all the right places. Big red in there is rotted in areas and you just can't get the repair panels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna section this thing and we're gonna replace the entire body on big red and send it out for sandblast and then paint. But first, I gotta get this clean because nobody wants to take this apart looking like it does. This thing has a running 390 FE motor in it, and uh, although I haven't heard it run, they say just add a battery and some fuel and it'll start right up and move under its own power. Uh, that's good, but I don't really care because, like I said, all I need is the skin, mainly the core support and these front fenders and the bed sides. So uh, next step, get wet. It was only 35 or 40 degrees, and it did take several hours to get all of the Tennessee mountains sprayed off of this truck so that I could get it clean enough to pull it inside. Now, the F-250 frame and chassis looked great, and as soon as I get all of the parts off of that, it'll be rebuilt, and we'll start combining the bodies. Now that you've met Big Red, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date with the builds and the progress because the suspension we're gonna put on this truck is gonna rival modern vehicles. Stay tuned.